you've probably learned that hot air rises and cold air sinks. This is the mechanism behind convection, and convection plays a major role in weather systems. In this video, I'll explain how this comes about. Very often, the rising of hot air is explained by the fact that hot air is lighter than cold air, and light things just happen to go up, just as a hot air balloon. But that doesn't really explain anything. Um, so let's first test the idea that uh, hot air is lighter than cold air. I've got this balloon here, and if I inflate it, it will be filled with my breath, which is about 37 degrees Celsius. So this is warm air. Okay, let's put it on this scale. The mass is 1.97 grams. Now let's put the balloon in the fridge for about 5 minutes and then weigh it again. If I take it out of the fridge it will be about 5 degrees Celsius. Let's take the balloon out of the fridge. It's about 5 degrees Celsius. Let's weigh the balloon again. Now the mass has increased to 2.19 grams, which is an increase of 0.22 grams. So indeed, cold air uh, weighs more than uh, warm air. Um, in physics, we actually distinguish between mass and weight. The scale doesn't measure the mass, although it gives you a mass, but it measures the weight. It measures the weight with which the balloon or the object on the scale is pulled down on the scale. And in this case, it's actually measuring the net force with which it's pushing down on the scale. Um, and as we'll see, the uh, gravity is not the only force acting on the balloon, it's also buoyancy due to the air surrounding the balloon. The weight of the balloon has become less due to what is called buoyancy. When I put the balloon on the weighing scale, gravity pulls it down. This causes the balloon to push down on the scale. This is what we call weight. In one of my other videos, I demonstrated that the pressure of the air decreases with altitude. As a result, the air presses harder on the bottom of the balloon than it does at the top, so there is a net upward force, which we call buoyancy. Now as it happens, cold air has a higher density than warm air, so the same amount of cold air takes up less space than warm air. Therefore, the cold balloon is slightly smaller, reaching less high. This causes the buoyant force on the cold balloon to be smaller than on the warm balloon, so it weighs more. We can actually calculate this difference in buoyant force with some rough estimates. The change in pressure equals the density of the air times the acceleration due to gravity times the change in height. For a small change in height, the density of the air can be taken to be constant. The balloon has a diameter of about 20 centimeters. If we fill everything in, the difference in pressure turns out to be 2.54 pascals. This results in a force of F equals P times A with a surface area of about 3.1 times 10 to the power of minus 2 meters squared. So for the warm balloon, the buoyant force is 7.87 times 10 to the power of minus 2 newtons. The cold balloon is about 5 millimeters smaller, so the change in height and the surface area are a bit smaller too. The buoyant force for the cold balloon then is 8.22 times 10 to the power of minus 2 newtons. We can calculate the difference in buoyant force and convert that to an equivalent mass. So the cold balloon should be about 0.4 grams lighter than the warm balloon. This is an upper limit because we did not take into account the round shape of the balloon. Some parts of the balloon experience a smaller upward force, so the real difference in mass will be smaller, just as we've measured. Now this principle of buoyancy is actually uh, nothing more than Archimedes' principle, which states that any object totally or partially immersed in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equally to the weight of the displaced uh, fluid by the object, displaced by the object. Um, and I can demonstrate that with this uh, weight of one kilogram, and I've got this scale here with, which measures up to 50 grams accurately. So I first need to turn it on, so it sets itself to zero, and if I weigh the mass, then it's indeed one kilogram, and then if I submerge it on the water here, then you can actually see the mass drop. It's now 0.85 kilograms. 
So indeed, there's an extra force acting upward, which is the difference in pressure in the fluid. So the pressure at the bottom of the weight is higher than the pressure at the top of the weight. And the difference in pressure causes a net upward force. Now, because this, this weight is kind of cylinder-like, we can actually uh, calculate the difference in force, and I'll show you. We will imagine that a cylinder-shaped object is submerged under water. Only the pressure of the water at the bottom of the cylinder will cause an upward force, because the pressure at the sides of the cylinder act horizontally. Now this pressure equals rho times g times h. The buoyant force then equals pressure p times surface area a. We will fill in the formula for pressure. The buoyant force equals rho times g times a times h. The height h times the surface area a is just the volume of our cylinder and equal to the amount of displaced water. Remember that rho is the density of water. So the buoyant force is equal to the mass of the water times the acceleration due to gravity, which is just the weight of the displaced water. This is Archimedes' principle. Now you can repeat the calculation for the situation where the top of the object is a bit below the water surface. You will get the same result. And it also works for more difficult shaped objects, but then the derivation is more difficult. From this calculation, you can also figure out when objects will float, if the density is less than that of water. Because then, the downward force, the weight of the object, is lower than the weight of the displaced water, the buoyant force. And the same holds true for air. If the density of warm air is lower than the density of the surrounding air, this warm air will start to float, will go up. So we've seen that Archimedes' principle can be derived from this difference in pressure in a fluid or a liquid. Um, now you might wonder whether it matters uh, in what way you submerge this object. Take this test tube for example. It's long and thin. If you put it in vertically, then the difference in pressure between the top and the bottom will be quite large. But the surface area down below, where the pressure is acting on, is quite small. If you put it in horizontally, then the difference in pressure between the top and the bottom is smaller, but the surface area has increased, which compensates, and the upward buoyant force is just the same. So warm air indeed is lighter than cold air. For the same amount of air, the downward force, the gravity on this air, is the same, but the warm air takes up more space, and so the difference in pressure between the top and the bottom of this parcel of warm air will be larger and the upward buoyant force will be larger. So hot air or warm air rises and cold air sinks. This is the mechanism behind convection and convection is like the motor behind weather. Um, I'll explain that in a different video. I hope you like this one. Thank you for watching.